Russo'sBrand.com, where the pros are the pros. Yeah, bro, I got to ask, have you, uh, I know you're busy now going around the world as you always do. I love this man because he he runs his own freaking career and he's doing well and he's he's the proof in the pudding to everyone out there who feels like they're in a prison and he's he's doing it, bro, and you could do it too. Don't say you can, but bro, have you had a chance to look at social media like in the last 24 hours? There's one thing I thought we would probably for sure cover. Go ahead. Not, not a ton. But I figured it was going to be the twenty-eight and one, <laughs> and then punk firing back at it like that. Bro, fight. what do you, bro? What do you think about? You can tell me when, your opinion on that. When is the veil going to lift? Like, how much longer do these Stan fans for that company going to? How much more can they tolerate before they have to say this guy is going to ruin our attempt to have a number two promotion because of his? inability to grasp simple concepts like i mean when punk goes out of his way to just fire one more back one final little f you that's too like this these divisive fans like punk's an internet hero punk's a wrestling hero like he's over in the mainstream he's over on the internet con caters to the internet niche market the internet niche market is pretty you know brutal at times and kind of uninformed though they think they're informed but yada yada, it's like politics. But when they have nobody else to go after, they're gonna eat their own. Yeah. So now it's like punk versus con. They're like, I don't know what the pick. It's it's very reminiscent to the political structure I see. But the absurdity, like, and genders. A, everybody loves gender. I don't know about fans, but first off, gender. Got fired. He came back. He became a world heavyweight champion. He was in incredible shape. If you watch his work when he was the champ too, like he was a true heel. He mm -hmm. worked his ass off mm -hmm. to bump and feed and make baby faces and get heat. And how few people do that. So he was a great, great champion. He's a great heel. Just taking shots at him because he's not a smart mark favorite was Khan's biggest mistake, I think. Because A, Jinder would rip his throat out if you ever saw him. B, Jinder doesn't need his money. He's had a very successful career. C, let fuck around and find out. Like, the guy has been programmed to lose fake fights for a year, and now he's getting rewarded for his service to the company to be in a main angle to see, again, if he can carry the load. And I hope he does, and I hope he wipes it in his fucking face. That's all. And he looks like a billion bucks still. The suit's on point. You tell me, be honest. The no socks, the no socks oh. and the loafers. Hey, that's heat, heat 101. If you go, like, the airport test is a big thing with wrestling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I see Jinder walking down here with a suit, chains, no socks, 6'5", two me bags, glasses on. Wait, who's this? handsome arabian prince holy and bro I, I i hate to break the news to trips in the wwe when he's in the ring cutting the promo with seth rollins this past week he looks he looked like he would eat rollins for lunch i mean you're looking at these two and you're saying bro if they shot went at it jinder would eat him for lunch bro yeah but then i mean i'm not trying to throw shade at a young up-and-comer but it I would imagine if you see the young man Hook walking through the airport, he's probably got sweats on, baggy, hair's a mess, kind of, you know, duffel bag. You're not paying mind. You're not double taken. So, like, what do you – it's Tony so unnecessary, man. It's just unnecessary. It's so unnecessary. Bro, the reason I ask that question is um, I had a very, very, very long conversation with somebody uh, who's currently – with AEW the other day. Yeah. And the one thing he said to me that really jumped out at me, he told me that a couple of times, bro, he's he's had conversations with the old man. I'm talking about old man Khan. And oh, Papa, yeah, Papa, Papa Khan. And he said to me, Vince, this guy is freaking brilliant. You know, you you talk to him for like two, three minutes, and you know this guy is brilliant. And, you know, once he told me, like, I'm just trying to understand, bro, how do you have a dad that's so brilliant 
And then you just see the son do these absolute bonehead things. Like, I, I would think the apple wouldn't fall far from the tree. But but here it sounds like the apple is in another orchard, bro. Yeah. And then, I mean, part of growing up with entitlement, I think, uh, how, do, how are you raised? How are you brought up? And, you know, I'm middle class. So I never suffered. I was never wondering where my next meal was coming from. But by no means were we rich. So I, I always had that comfort. I think when you can have anything you want from day one, you become delusional very quickly. And you can't see things from a normal perspective where I don't, how often does, you know, the prince who inherits the throne turn out to be a tyrant compared to the king that everybody loved, like from Richard the Lionheart or Julius Caesar, Augustus takes over, reigned forever, but he thought he was a god. He literally thought he was God, you know? So it's like, I guess it's just come on the come up and bring up. I don't want to be political, but I, Trump raised, I heard this Don Jr. thing where he's talking about when I was growing up, my dad sent me to live in communism with my mother's family. So I saw what that was like. So I spent summers living a completely different life just so when I came back here, A, I appreciated it. B, I knew that's a very special thing, what we have in this country, whether you're middle class, you know, rich, whatever, that like he was, he forced him to learn the other aspect. And I don't know how Tony was raised, but yeah. you know, it's just like, how are you, how are you brought up? I think is big. You know, bro, and, let me, I want I want to ask you this question because, bro, listen, we know we we know, especially there in AEW, we we know you you could see it a mile away. The guy's paying us crazy money. Collect that check for as long as you can and keep your mouth shut. That's professional wrestling in a nutshell. Now, bro, I know with me when I worked for Dixie, when I worked for Vince, I always felt this way, bro. When I saw something that was wrong. And I saw something that I felt I needed to talk to Dixie or Vince about that just was wrong. I was always like, bro, I was the opposite. I was like, they're signing my paycheck. It is my responsibility to tell them they are paying me. So I, 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 want, I want to ask you, bro, if you were in the middle of this, would you take... I can't see you taking the approach of giving me my money next week, next week, next week, opposed to Tony. Can we talk for five minutes? H how would yeah. you handle it, bro? How much are they paying me? Five mil a year. <laughs> oh, geez. I, fucking... <laughs> I, I can't. I would care too much to not at least let it be vocalized. I think I am decent enough at telling people bad things in a good way. There's even with, you know, NWA, we're not making that kind of money, but I have like lists of things I think we can do as a company that we do well, that we can do better, that we don't do well at all. And, you know, I'm sitting on it it's because like, when's the time to like, you know, do this and yada, yada. But uh, I did talk to him prior to uh, during the pandemic when I was signed with Ring of Honor and he had an idea and it sucked. And I was like... I don't know. I was very open and honest. I'm like, I don't think that's very creatively fulfilling, but what might work and what might build somebody on your roster into a really good spot in the future, like me doing this, coming in and da, 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 da. and then I went against what his want was and we didn't talk again. So Wow. So you really feel like just being wasn't good. So being honest like that might have been the reason why you weren't hired there, possibly. Maybe. Yeah. Then he thought I was, you know, CYM was affiliated with right wing conspiracy groups, but whatever. He reads the internet. That's where oh he gets God. his wrestling information from. Bro, I swear to God, uh, EC, that's that's where I I used to get so much heat with Dixie there, because like the boys were working her and stuff like that, and I was always the guy trying to smart her up, but it always used to backfire on me because she didn't want to hear it, and it always got her upset, and and she felt like. I was calling her an idiot <laughs> and I'm like, no, Dixie, you're not an idiot, but you're working with the best workers in the world. I'm, I'm just trying to smarten you up. 
So, I mean, it sounds, I mean, it could backfire on you, and it sounds like that may have happened. Yeah. And, like, Dixie, too, kind of came up as, you know, from wealth and an entitlement and seeing, like, the other side. I mean, coming into wrestling is a, such a weird thing to do, especially if you have something people want because they're going to do everything they can to take it from you. Because she probably comes from that same issue that Tony may have had, but at the same time, they're also not used to being told no or I disagree. They're used to being told, yeah, of course, whatever you want, whatever you need, as long as I'm paid my uh, shillings, right? 